I think that's m less about the one thing that has the most promise and more about, you know, 10 years ago, there was little to nothing going on in the Huntington's disease space um, in terms of completely novel and new therapeutics. There were some really well-designed trials um, with uh, supplements or you know, available agents um, that taught us a lot. But at this point now, there's this whole slew of brand new things that are really changing the landscape. They're disease modifying or neuroprotective. They're really gonna change um, how people's disease progresses if they work out. Um, and uh, none of them, even if they all work, not any single one of them is 100% fix, uh, especially not for 100% of people with Huntington's disease. But I can see a future where um, you may end up using two agents that are both neuroprotective in different ways to try to get as much gain as possible. Um, so it's more in my mind to the conceptual space that the trials are really pushing in very early symptomatic or even people who have almost no symptoms looking at both progression of disease but also uh, biomarkers for MRI volumetrics or FTG PET um, to see if their therapeutics are really working or not. Um, probably the thing that everybody is talking about the most is the Huntington lowering strategies. So th this is a whole panel of things. Only one of them has completed a uh, full-on trial in humans, the Roche-Ionis antisense oligonucleotide compound. Um, these are all looking to lower the level of mutant Huntington protein. Um, almost all of them also lower the level of normal or wild type Huntington protein at the same time. Uh, and they're targeted at different areas, whether that's pre-mRNA, mRNA itself, um, or other strategies. So the biggest buzz is around the Roche compound because they do have data out from their phase one, two, and they are uh, launching a really big phase three um, in probably early 2019. So um, still, uh, at the drawing board level, but very public statements about the number of sites and their, their hopes for the number of participants. Um, and uh, there's an ongoing study that is actively enrolling people, so another antisense oligonucleotide, that company is WAVE. Um, and then the big difference between the two is the WAVE compound is what's called allele specific, so it only takes down mutant Huntington and doesn't touch the wild type whereas the Roche compound and all the other stuff that's in more preclinical development takes down both. So we don't know how much is safe in terms of lowering normal Huntington. This could potentially have really severe consequences if you take away um, the huge majority of the normal Huntington. Uh, on the other hand, you seem to be able to get away with taking away some of it. Ideally, you'd like to take away all the mutant Huntington, <laughs> But, but now you have to make a balance. Can you take down enough of the mutant Huntington to make a difference while leaving enough of the normal Huntington f to avoid any downstream consequences? The wave um, antisense oligonucleotide is designed around the genetic haplotype background so they can target the mutant allele alone. Uh, the downside there it, this sounds perfect, right? So you can wipe out as much mutant Huntington as you want. The normal is fine. But uh, not everyone has the same genetic haplotype. So now you're going to make a therapeutic that's only applicable, even if it's applicable to a majority of the people with carrying that mutation, it's never going to be applicable to everyone carrying that mutation. And you're going to have to redesign new rounds of it for every different haplotype background. Um, so radically different advantages and disadvantages. The other thing in the Huntington lowering space is that those are the antisense oligonucleotides and those are the ones furthest along. People are talking the most about because they're actively in humans. But the next wave is um, coming very soon um, and those are um, AV uh, viral vector carried things like um, siRNAs or miRNAs. And those are going to be a single lifetime dose. The antisense oligonucleotides are repeated intrathecal injections. So that's nice if things are going badly, you can pull back, but then 
if they're working, or do you going to have to do intrathecal injections every month for the rest of the person's life, or how are you going to deal with access? So different pros and cons. The AAV Vector Therapeutics, that's Unicure, Voyager, Spark, are all, all companies that are publicly out there um, with stated compounds. Uh, they're going to be the one lifetime dose of uh, stereotactic neurosurgery. So that's great, one and done. Um, but then they're irreversible, which makes some people quite nervous. <laughs> You've done an irreversible thing to the brain that keeps going. Um, the preclinical data that Unicure has out publicly is in filling the chitate and putamen and then using the viral vector delivery to spread out to the cortex. So there's questions about will that hit frontal cortex where we know a lot of the problems are, but then you don't want to do surgery in ventral striatum because that has some bad consequences. Um, the Voyager team is starting to publish preclinical data filling chitate putamen and thalamus to give them a bit of a different pattern but it, it's not really clear what the downsides to that kind of surgery are going to be. Um, but I can see where those compounds might be very exciting for people who are just like, how are you going to deal with injections forever? This you know, one-time surgery that, that we know how to do could be hugely advantageous. Um, and those are all allele nonspecific. Those are all going to take down normal and mutant Huntington. So those are all going to be fixes for everyone, but partial fixes for everyone. Um, so to see that um, evolution, you know, how, how much can we push the boundaries of what we can do with mutant Huntington, what can we get away with with normal Huntington, the range of stuff that's already in humans, people often ask about CRISPR, thing fingers, there's tons of science going on, but what's impressive to me is that there's a lot of stuff in actual people um, really getting pushed forward in the now.